Welcome back to Good Gear, the show about the world's most fairly appreciated audio tools. Lately, influential bad gear lobbyists have been doing their best to make us forget that Good Gear even exists. Well, I'm here today to bring a voice to the resistance. I will not forget, and I won't let you forget, that Good Gear exists. In the world of classic polyphonic synths, there's one name you can bet almost everyone has heard. Roland has been a programmable polyphonic powerhouse, and they're responsible for some of the most iconic synths across multiple eras. The Jupiter 8, the JX3P, the JX8P, the JV, and XV series. Now, if you're familiar with Roland, read the title of the video, or looking at the screen right now, I know you're furiously typing your comment to let me know I forgot your favorites. The Juno 6, 60, and the topic of today's video, the Juno 106. Legendary six voice polysynths. They're brought up so frequently online, it's been played out since the 90s. Hipsters, OGs, and everybody in between can't get enough. You'd be hard-pressed to find somebody that doesn't have an opinion. Within that, you'd be hard-pressed to find somebody that doesn't like it, unless you're comparing it to something older, which, in that case, older is better. Always. 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 There's no exceptions. Older is better. At first glance, the 106 is ticking all the boxes. A stylish combo of blue lines, red lines, faded yellow buttons, faded orange buttons, Blue faded to turquoise buttons, all on top of a bog standard gray, just screams, this is a product. Moving on to the controls, the finger friendly faders follow, frankly, a f***ing foolproof flow with nearly no features beyond what you can see on the panel. What you see is what you get, and what you get is exactly what you need. One oscillator that can be a variable pulse wave, or a sawtooth, or both along with the sub-oscillator to give the Juno that low end that it's often praised for. Then, our classic Roland OTA filter and a high pass with fixed levels to clean up some of the mud. One envelope is shared for the VCA and the VCF. And of course, our two settings of chorus. The 106 is modern enough to have MIDI and accept SysX, so using desktop editors allows us a lot of options for storing and editing patches. With 128 presets organized into two banks of 64, we can find classic sounds such as pianos, synth pads, drums, low dark strings, And so many others. Just like the water levels of our dying planet, you can find the prices of the Juno 106 constantly rising and these days reaching uncomfortable levels. In recent years, Roland has released modern iterations of the Juno in the form of the Four Voice Boutique series. The Four Voice Limit is a serious handicap, like Hand and Florian, a keyboard that only has black keys. Even still, almost every separate piece of the Juno has been copied or cloned by one manufacturer, or likely multiple. The chorus exists as a standalone pedal, as a standalone VST. The entire synth exists as a VST. Its oscillators, filter, and VCA all exist in Eurorack. There's even a modern inspired by a clone in the form of Behringer's DeepMind 12. But, just like the saying goes, a synth is much more than the combination of its modules. I find that to be true with the Juno 106. To prove it, here's the Juno doing what it does best, making synth sounds. As realized by this post naughties mid dotties <laughs> As realized by this post naughties mid dotties submelodic, post-harmonic, full-bore, half-cocked, properly sterilized, no-dairy, full-fat, mostly in-tune, sarcastic, or jam track. Just kidding. Genre is a construct.
Juno 106 is ubiquitous for good reason. It's almost impossible to find a position on most of the faders that sounds bad, and the chorus is the cherry on top. It'll make any patch sound like it was pulled from the water of an 80s Miami pool party. I would recommend buying one, but only if you luck out on a good deal or land one in a favorable trade. By a good deal, I mean no more than 4.5 MPC 500s. <laughs> Cheers to Florian and the Bad Gear channel for inspiration. I have it linked in the description below. This is all in good fun. I appreciate so much of what he does for the community. Great information, great details, great content coming from him. If you aren't subscribed to Bad Gear on YouTube, I highly suggest you do. He does videos that are formatted like this, but legitimate and much funnier than this. If you're able to, I recommend supporting his Patreon. Keeping him out of the workforce is best for all of us. Mine have been Jorb. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Happy April Fool's Day.